Hello YouTube. In this tutorial we are going to learn how to set up a smooth scroll library which is called Locomotive Scroll and use it alongside GSAP. As you might know GSAP scroll trigger is not working with Locomotive Scroll by default. This animation has a second part where we learn to switch the view mode to grid and make cool effects. For people who asked, the all codes are visible and I explain them during each tutorial. But if you are interested to have them or copy and paste this code directly into your projects, you can join my Patreon where you can learn a lot about Webflow or even clone these templates. As we have taught, we review the required structure first. We have text wrapper which is 100 VW width. The text wrapper position is set to fixed, so it will be always fixed at the top of the window. We also have a deep wrapper which contains our CMS, and there is a fixed deep block which sits at the bottom of the screen. As I explained earlier, we use 100 view for the width of the text wrapper. Also, there is 50% left padding for the content inside of the text wrapper. There is a child wrapper which contains our text. The thing is we need to enable no shrink or grow for this wrapper. This wrapper doesn't have a specific width and adjust its size according to the text length. Let's dive into our scrollable content. We add a div, and this div contains our CMS. I have used a div. This div is using flex to align the child items. There are two div inside the main div. One for the left content which includes heading and description. Right is for the images. For the image wrapper, we used a specific size, and its overflow, set to hidden. I also put an image inside the image wrapper. This image is using 100% of the width of our wrapper. But since we are going to let the image move inside our wrapper, its height is set to 140%. To achieve the same effect, make sure the position of the image is set to absolute. Also, the bottom is set to zero, so the bottom of the images is aligned with the bottom of the wrapper. We also set the position of the image wrapper to relative.
now we want to get our hands dirty with the codes. Sit tight. Especially, if you want to learn use Locomotive Scroll and GSAP together. Just for people who don't know, Locomotive Scroll is hijacking the scroll position. For that reason, GSAP library or most Webflow animations won't work. But we can do something to let GSAP work with our smooth scroll library. We need to use these codes inside the CSS section to prevent extra scrolling. You can get these codes from my Patreon page. Also, we need to paste some script tags which help us to install the locomotive scroll. We need to import three libraries. One is the locomotive scroll, one is the GSAP library, and last is the scroll trigger. Now we have to register the scroll trigger. Below that line, we define the locomotive scroll. Locomotive scroll has some variables. First is smooth true, which enables the smooth scrolling. Second is the multiplier, which defines the speed of the scroll. The numbers below one make the scroll speed slow. Finally, we want to enable smooth scrolling for mobile and tablet devices. In case you don't want to have the smooth scrolling, remove the mobile and tablet sections. This line is necessary for using locomotive scroll and GSAP together. This line will update the scroll position. All lines below this code will connect the locomotive scroll to the scroll trigger and GSAP. You can get this code from my Patreon. To understand better how this code works, we tell our GSAP to use the locomotive scroll to find how far the scroll bar has moved up or moved down. Just remember to update the class name inside these lines and replace that with the class name you have used for the wrapper. Here we use content wrapper as the class name for our parent wrapper. So, we simply update all lines I have showed you and replace the class name inside them with content wrapper. Don't forget to add this line too. It will tell all scroll triggers to monitor the movement of the content wrapper to run the on-scroll animations. We have set up the locomotive scroll and also the required libraries for GSAP and scroll trigger. It's time to learn how to animate the images and make the parallax movement possible. Just again for people who don't know how to get these codes, you can join my Patreon to get these codes or simply look for them inside the GSAP library documentation. As we have learned earlier, each image is inside a wrapper. The image is covering the width of its wrapper, but the height of the image is set to 140%. The image needs to be taller than its wrapper as it moves. The reason is we make the image taller than its wrapper is, if the image wouldn't be taller, when it moves inside its wrapper, part of the wrapper would be empty as the image had been moved up or down. Also make sure the position of the images is set to absolute. Also, 
the bottom value is set to zero as you can see on my screen. For the image wrapper we use a desired value as width and height, but the position of the image wrapper must be set to relative. The only thing we need to do to recreate the smooth parallax effect you have seen before, is adding some custom attributes to the images. We add two attributes. One is data scroll which tells the locomotive scroll the image moves. Data scroll speed is telling browser how fast the image moves up or down. As you can see, I have used a negative value for data scroll speed. The reason is, when scroll down, the overall container moves up, but we want the images have a parallax movement, so we use a negative value. When we scroll down, the images move down but the overall container will move up. Let's publish the changes and see how the parallax movement works. We are only one step away from completing the first part of this tutorial. As you can see the image parallax movement works perfectly. We only need to animate the heading text at the top of the screen. Let's do it and continue with the second part of the animation in upcoming days. Let's learn the structure of the heading text again. We have a wrapper and the width of this wrapper is set to 100, so the text wrapper will fill the width of the window. Also the left padding is set to 50%. The text wrapper position is set to fixed. There is another wrapper inside the text wrapper. This child wrapper doesn't have a fixed width. It adjusts its size according to the text length. Make sure the option Don't Shrink Don't Grow is enabled for the child wrapper. Also we have text which is inside the child wrapper. The text wrapper position is set to fixed. So, the text will sit at the top of the screen and it would be fixed. If everything is done visually, we just need to add some codes. We use GSAP2. We want to animate the child wrapper. We set the class name to text slide wrapper as it's the element which moves. GSAP2 has some attributes. X value will define how far the child wrapper moves horizontally. Ease, none will define there is no need to use easing for this animation. Since we want the animation progress relies on the scroll position, we add a scroll trigger attribute. There is no need to use scroller. We already defined that. The scroll trigger has other attributes. Start will define when the animation starts. We set that to top top. So when the top of the trigger which is the content wrapper, sits at the top of the window, the animation starts. Also, we have end attribute. I set that to bottom bottom. When the bottom of the trigger which is the content wrapper reaches the bottom of the window, animation progress would be done. Trigger is set to content wrapper. As we calculate how far the text moves according to the position of our content wrapper. Let's review all attributes once more. X will define how far the text moves horizontally. Ease will define the easing of our animation. Scroll trigger will tell GSAP to process the progress of our animation according to the scroll position of the trigger element. Here we set the trigger to content wrapper. Start value will tell browser when animation starts, and end value will tell our browser when it gets done. Let's publish the changes to see the text animation in action. As you can see the text animation works perfectly. Text moves based on how far we scroll down or up. We learn the second part in upcoming days. It would be a little longer than the first part but you can create cool effects. Again, 
If you are interested to grab these codes or copy and paste them directly into your Tejex, you can join my Patreon. Aside that, you can clone all template for free and reuse them inside your projects.